Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are simplifying simple entry. I'm going to show you how to enter notes and rests using just the mouse top and the laptop keyboard layout. Now, when you use a laptop with simple entry, we do need to make sure that the laptop keyboard table is active. So uh, click in the simple entry tool, find the simple menu, choose simple entry options. At the bottom, choose edit keyboard shortcuts. And towards the bottom, it says the section keyboard shortcut set. Just make sure that you have laptop shortcut table selected and click OK and OK. And what this will do is will allow uh, simple entry to make better use of the laptop layout as opposed to having a number pad. And uh, that setting will be permanent, by the way. So if you uh, open a different file or quit finale, that setting will still be active. It's a program option in that way. All right. Now to enter uh, notes and simple entry with the mouse, all you got to do is go down to the simple entry tool palette, which opens up when you go into the simple uh, entry tool and select one of the rhythms, just highlight it, and then go into the staff and just put the note on the line or the space that you want. Easy as that. And then you can switch to another rhythm and enter more notes. It does get a little tricky with the mouse because you got to be careful. And then, um, Select another rhythm. Now, it will get a little tedious this way, going back and forth between the score and the simple entry tool palette. So there's a quicker way to access these rhythms directly. And that's with these numbers, which will correspond with these rhythms. So 1 for 64th, 2 for 32nd, etc. You can see what this is, 5 for quarter. All right, so without even going into the simple tool palette, just press 5, and you'll get quarter notes, or 4, and you'll get eighth notes. All right, easy enough. Um, if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that there is a 128th note rhythm in the simple entry tool palette, which does not exist in this table I've created here. And that is because there is no shortcut for the 128th note. If you want to use a 128th note, you will have to actually go into the simple tool palette and select it with the mouse. Okay. Uh, once we have uh, notes in the score, um, it's easy enough to add intervals, and simply all you have to do is once that note is entered, you can see it's highlighted, and then just move your mouse over top or underneath that, and click again, and it will add that interval. All right, just be careful about where you're entering it. All right. Incidentally, if you have a different rhythm selected and you try and do this, it won't add the interval; it will change the rhythm. So if I'm gonna, you know, I've got the quarter note there, I've got the eighth note um, selected. It'll just change that note to an, an eighth note instead. Um, but if the rhythms are similar, it will uh, it will add the, the interval, OK? There's a couple other ways to add intervals without using the mouse directly like that. Um, with the F keys, F2 through F8, we can add seconds through octaves. Um, and if you're using a Mac laptop with a touch bar, you know that you have to actually use that function key to even get to the F keys. So from here, F3 will give me a third above. And now that new note is highlighted, so if I press F3 again, it will be a third above that. All right. So we can get seconds through octaves that way, just with the F keys. We can get a ninth, but it requires a couple of extra keys, and that's uh, Command Shift F9 will give us a ninth. All right. And we can get intervals below as well using Shift F2 through F9. So Shift. F3 will give me a third below. Shift F4 will give me a fourth below that note. And uh, Shift F9 will give me a ninth below without any extra keystrokes. All right. And one final way to enter notes is with the letters on the keyboard itself using the Shift key. So Shift A through G will give you uh, pitches A through G. So if I press Shift D from here, I'll get a D. Shift F, etc. All right. Shift C to get a C added to that note. Easy enough. Um, rests. There's a couple ways to get rest. The, um, the most direct way with the mouse is to find the simple rest palette. Now the simple note palette will appear automatically when you enter, enter the simple entry tool, but the rest palette will not. But you can get to it from here in the window towards the, the middle here, simple entry rest palette. Just select that and it will appear. And incidentally, that's uh, the simple entry rest palette will not appear by default in Finale, but you can um, change that if you go to the Finale Preferences and Palettes and Backgrounds and check Show Rest Palette in Simple Entry, right? Now, when you do this, every time you leave Simple Entry and come back to Simple Entry, that rest palette will now appear. If you're using a mouse uh, primarily to enter notes in Simple Entry, that might be a good idea to have that, to keep that checked, all right? 
And so once you have that palette there, just simply select um, a rhythm and you can enter the rest that way. All right. Um, and there's another way to do this without, e without having to go to the rest palette. If you're entering notes, if you're going along entering some eighth notes and you press option R, it will temporarily turn that eighth note note into an eighth note rest, okay? And then option R will get it back to a note entry for you, all right? So you can use option R. And then finally, if you have a note entered and you see that it's highlighted there, just press the R key and it will turn that note into a rest, all right? So there's several ways to um, simply get rests uh, in, in simple entry, all right? Um, deleting notes is fairly easy. If you press the delete key, whatever is highlighted will get deleted. Just kind of makes sense. And um, one thing to know about this is that if you delete a note that's not at the end, so if I were to delete the C at the beginning of this measure, the whatever's to the right of it will move over. All right. So that's how that works. If you wanted to change something in the middle to a rest, you'd have to use the R key again, right? And then that will turn that into a rest. All right, so we can just delete as much as we need to. All right, um, let's talk about dotted notes. So to get a dotted notes, just choose a rhythm, enter it. And then once it's entered, press the period key and it will turn it into a dot. Easy enough. Enter another note, period, turn it into a dot. Now we can get what I would call a sticky dot, and what I mean by that is if you engage it, uh, every note that you enter will be a, s a dotted note. So if I have a quarter note selected, and you'll see that the quarter note is highlighted in the simple entry palette, I can just simply add the dot to that selection and both things get highlighted. And now I've got a, quarter, uh, a dotted quarter note, which uh, would be handy in uh, compound time, right? Compound meters, and you can enter uh, dotted quarter notes quickly that way instead of instead of having to do you know five note period five note period five right just do it like that and we can get to the, we can get the sticky dot turned on and off without actually clicking on it using shift period all right so shift period will toggle it off and then shift period it will toggle it on, toggle it on again all right so that is dots and sticky dots using period and shift period uh, ties fairly easy as well. So if we enter a half note there and press the T key, it will put a tie there. And again, T will turn it off or on. Toggle it on or off. And then you just enter another note. And there you go. Now, if you happen to uh, enter a couple notes and you forgot to, to tie before you entered the second note, you can tie backwards uh, from the highlighted note with shift T. All right, so shift T will toggle a backwards tie on and off as well. And finally, we can do a sticky tie as well, which could be handy if we've got a, a string of um, whole notes tied together. So let's choose a whole note. And, and the key command for this is uh, command shift T. And you'll notice that the tie tool is highlighted. And of course, you can just obviously just click on it as well. It will do the same thing, but command shift T for that sticky tie. And my uh, cursor has the tie icon after it. And then we just enter a note and it's got the tie automatically. And we can just enter a bunch of them this way. And then when we want to turn it off, Command Shift T again. We'll turn it off and we can enter the last one if I get it in the right place. Tricky sometimes in the mouse, you got to get the right um, on the right line or, or, or uh, uh, space there. All right. Uh, so that's ties. How about accidentals? So if we enter a note, let's say D. Um, the plus, or actually the equals and the minus key in the top right corner of the laptop keyboard will give you uh, plus a half step or minus a half step. So equals will give you plus a half step, plus another half step, and then minus will give you subtract half steps, I guess, right? And we can actually keep going. Uh, it's sharp, double sharp, triple sharp. We can actually keep going to, I think that's seven sharps. And then finale will stop. And then go backwards, or f downwards rather. And you can get up to seven flats if for some reason you actually need that. And if you have an accidental here and you want to turn that back into a D natural, you can simply use the N key, right? And it will change any accidental note to a natural. And if you have a note like a C sharp in the key signature, right, and press N, it will make it a C natural as well, all right? 
And we can do uh, some sticky accidentals as well. Um, sharps, sticky sharps and sticky flats will have a keystroke combination for it. So option equals will give you a sticky sharp. You can see that the sharp gets highlighted. And then from there, you can enter sharps. And if you enter a C in this case, it's already in the key signature, so you won't see a sharp there. And then option minus will give you flats. Right. There is no shortcut for naturals, but we can just simply select it in the, in the tool palette and get all naturals in this way. And again, it will only put the naturals where it actually needs it. And then there's two other options here, plus half step and minus half step, which again, there's no keyboard shortcuts, but you can select it. And this will behave slightly different than, plus half will, will behave slightly different than sharps, for example, because you know you put an A sharp, it'll put a B sharp, but when it gets to C, because C sharp is in the key signature, it will give you a C double sharp because it's plus one half step from the where it should be in the key, right? So that's how that works. F, you get an F double sharp. And then the same thing with minus half, <coughs> right? We would get an A flat, but we'd get a G natural because it's a half step lower than the G sharp in the key signature, but E flat, right? If that makes sense. All right, so that's uh, accidentals. Um, grace notes, let me just clear out some space here because I'm running out of room. Uh, grace notes are fairly easy in simple entry as well. What we want to do is enter a note first. Let's enter, oops, without that half step selected, enter a note. And then option G will turn that note into a grace note. And then we can enter another note. Enter another note, option G. All right, and that's how we would get grace notes. And we can do sticky grace notes as well with command G. And you'll notice that the grace note gets highlighted in the tool palette. And then from here, we can just enter as many grace notes as we want until we're done. And then command G will turn that off. And then we can enter our final note there. All right, so that's option G and command G will give you a sticky grace note, all right? And finally, let's talk about tuplets. Um, tuplets are fairly easy in Finale as well. Uh, but the thing to know about tuplets is that you want to enter the rhythm of the tuplet value that you want. So in other words, if you want an eighth note triplet, you need to enter an eighth note first, right? So I've got my eighth note selected and I enter the eighth note there and then just press the nine key and that will create the triplet, and then you can fill out the rest, all right? Nine creates the triplet, and then fill out the rest of the notes. And so if I had a quarter note selected and enter the quarter note first and press nine, it would create a quarter note triplet, all right? Oops, you gotta be careful where you click. All right, so the triplet is the default tuplet in Finale. Um, there's a, another way to get to a different type of tuplet, and I'll show you that in a second, but before I do that, I wanted to show you that you can also do sticky tuplets with Command-9, and you'll see that the tuplet tool gets highlighted, and again, with that uh, eighth note, and, and by the way, you have to do this before you enter the note, all right? So before you enter the eighth note, press Command-9, and it will give you the triplets, and then you can just enter a string of triplets in a row, just like that, until you're done, all right? And then again, Command-9 will turn it off, and you're good to go. Now, I did mention that there's a way to get tuplets other than triplets, right? So let's say we want to enter uh, 5 sixteenths in the space of 4 sixteenths. So we'll start the, tri the tuplet the same way. We'll enter the first note with the 16th note. Instead of pressing 9, press Option 9, and we'll get the Simple Entry Tuplet Definition dialog box, all right? Now, you'll see that y what you have highlighted currently is what the default is, which is three use current in the space of two use current. And use current just in, uh, refers to the, the rhythm that you first entered. So in this case, it's a 16th note. So if I were to just click OK, I'd get a, a 16th note triplet. But from here, we can change the numbers, five in the space of four. That will give me five 16ths in the space of four 16ths, right? And then you've got your five tuplet, and you're good to go. Now that's the use currents, but th there are some other things that you can do with that. So the best example is of this is the uh, the swing tuplet rhythm, you know, the quarter note, eighth note, under a eighth note triplet bracket, right? If you think about it, if you enter a quarter note first, if I were to press nine to get a triplet, I would get a quarter note triplet, right? But that's not what we want. We want an eighth note triplet. So instead of using nine directly, just use option nine. And instead of where it says use current, you can actually select the rhythm. So let's, we'll call it three eighths in the space of two eighths. Now, 
th what this will do is will force Finale to create an eighth note triplet despite what I have entered there to begin with, right? So if I click OK, see now it's just created a simple eighth note triplet with starting with a quarter note. All right, so that's how you would do that swing rhythm. All right, option nine, three eighth. Oops, three eighth in the space of two eighths. Okay, and you can do that. Now there was another option there that I wanted to show you in that dialog box. Let's say we're going to enter that five tuplet again, and um, we'll start as we usually do, right? So we're going to do five use current in the space of four use current. That'll give us our five tuplet sixteenth notes because I entered a sixteenth note first, right? And then we have an option here, save as default simple entry tuplet definition. So if I check that and click OK, the first thing it's going to do is going to create that five tuplet as I want, right? But now, when I enter another tuplet using simply nine, I don't have to go through that option nine dialog box anymore. It will change that default tuplet to the five tuplet now, all right? just by pressing 9. That's kind of handy. All right. Now this can be used in conjunction with what I showed you before about that swing tuplet, right? So if I were to start this tuplet with the, the quarter note again, we want that swing tuplet thing, choose option 9, and again it's going to say 5 in the space of 4 because we we've redefined that uh, default uh, definition, right? So let's go back to 3, but again eighth notes, not use current, in the space of two eighth notes. And we'll save this as the new default simple entry tuplet definition. Click OK. It's going to create that tuplet for me. And now, you know, enter the quarter note, press 9. You get the uh, swing tuplet version, right? And we can even do this in conjunction with the sticky triplet. So from here, if I press Command 9, right, now I've got the triplet tool activated. And all we have to do at this point, oops, is enter the quarter note, enter the eighth note. Enter the quarter note, enter the eighth note. Oops. You got to be careful where you click. Enter the quarter note, enter the eighth note. All right? So that's a really quick way to make short work of that s uh, swing tuplet rhythm using the, um, the save as default tuplet definition and the sticky triplet. All right? And uh, one thing to know about that default uh, tuplet definition, when you save it, it will be saved permanently. So when you uh, open another file or quit Finale and come back to it, that default definition will remain what it was last set to. So just be careful about that. You know, if you've got those five tuplets set and you come back later to a different project and press 9, and y you'll get a five tuplet and you'll be very confused. But uh, just be aware of that that's how that works. All right. So I think I covered it all. I showed you how to enter notes and rests. We uh, put some dotted ties and accidentals and grace notes and finally some tuplets. So uh, hopefully you've learned a lot and um, uh, we can you can uh, start going um, entering notes from here. All right. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.